All right, guys, we've had a major stuff up. I've gone to check the recirculating shower water, how it's going to work and everything. Filled up the tank, or started to fill up the tank. Got to 80% and then it kept dropping. I think, what's going on? And anyway, Carolyn said there was some water dripping from the side and I had a look and it was. And I got under the bus and it didn't look like it was coming from any holes or anything. Got inside the bus and this was completely chockers of water. So obviously what's happening is the water tank's getting to a certain spot and backfilling through the drain. So I've got to put somehow put a one-way valve on the drain going back to the shower to stop that from happening. Otherwise, as you can see, it just fills everything up. And now I've got to try and dry everything out, which is a pain in the butt, but this is why you test it and check what's wrong. So luckily we tested it before we did everything. It probably would have been better if it was waterproofed but I couldn't do that until after I'd tested it. So anyway, we got to dry it all up and let it dry out now and hopefully it hasn't stuffed anything up. All right guys, now I've had time to clean up the mess and dry it all off before it started to do anything. I, lucky nothing was fixed. The only one that's fixed is this one here and down the bottom I'm hoping it'll be, won't be too bad, but I'll have to wait and see and the floor is drying off now. So, major miscalculation in building this recirculating shower. I've got to make sure to somehow stop the water backflowing this way up the drain, which is what happened. So, there's some issues with that, so I've got to work that out before I do that again <laughs> and check it all out. I am going to check the normal water for the sink and the toilet, just to make sure there's no leaks. Alrighty, we've got to fix up this situation with the shower, recirculate shower back filling up inside to the shower. So what I've got to do is I've got to take off this section here, all the way to here, and put the new piece that I've got, the Hepvo valve, which will come from here across to here. So I'm going to cut off, cut off this section here and also here and then take this section out and hopefully then we can put in this new piece. Okay, with the stuff up, one thing I did notice and I'm glad I did it and if you're at the part where you've got your floor out, make sure you put weep holes along your channels at the back. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Along here I've got some weep holes and also in behind this pieces of uh, plywood here I've got some weep holes right at the bottom. Where the water used to like to congregate when it was leaking through these here. And that's one of the reasons why I noticed there was water it was coming down here and this was starting to fill up a bit so make sure you put some leap holes in that will save you if you do have a flood this is the hepvo valve that i've put in so the water comes down the drain from the shower through the hepvo valve and then back to the tank now the water can only flow this way there's a little plastic my bladder sort of thing inside so the water comes through and once the water goes out it closes again this has stopped it when we filled the water up so this doesn't seem to be a problem there so we've checked all the water's working now i'll put a link up where i got this hepvo valve from i got the valve plus the knuckle that goes on to the pipe here i got the 32 mil one and then I had to get a reducer to go back in the 25mm hose. 